30 years ago, the apartheid government made a move that would pave the way for the end of white minority rule. Then President F.W. de Klerk used his opening in, of Parliament speech to announce the unbanning of uh, liberation movements and the release of former President Nelson Mandela, uh, announcing that he would be released soon. Speaking to Manalisa Dubasa this morning, he also spoke about his relationship with Nelson Mandela. In December 1989, he was brought from the Victor Verstappen prison under cover of darkness to my office in Tainais here next to Parliament, which later became his office. <laughs> and we had an a, a discussion, not talking about the things we would negotiate about later. It was really a discussion in which we tried to assess the other person. And both of us later wrote in our respective autobiographies. After that discussion, we have developed a feeling, I think I can build trust with this man. I think I can do business with this man. And there was a mutual respect born that day, which none, notwithstanding later tensions between me and him at times. I remember those. We never lost that basic mutual respect. I found him to be an extremely dignified person, highly intelligent, analytical in his approach, a good listener, and one has to be a good listener to be a good leader. I was impressed by him, and I remain impressed, I remain impressed by him to this day. Well, we're now joined in studio by Vern Harris from the Nelson Mandela Foundation on, uh, to talk about this significant day and also this relationship that F.W. de Klerk talks about that uh, it was one of mutual respect. How much do we know about how Nelson Mandela got on or didn't with uh, F.W. de Klerk? Well, they've both spoken about it mm. um, at, at different points and when we put those bits together I think we understand that uh, it was a relationship that could be described as a working relationship mm. uh, there were severe strains and there were low points uh, almost uh, at times you know where the relationship broke down completely yeah. there's uh, on a day like today often what happens is people look back at history and those moments and they start to understand it slightly differently because all the facts now are perfect in hindsight when we do look back to the fe February the 2nd, 1990, um, what comes to mind in terms of the role players, ANC, SACP, you name it, and FW de Klerk, is having to defend his legacy. And I just wonder, from your perspective as an archivist, as a historian, and one who works with the Nelson Mandela Foundation, what role did he play in that unbanning of uh, uh, political parties and the freeing of Nelson Mandela? Well, it was a significant role, mm. clearly. Um, but I think when we look at the, the longer trajectory of, yeah. of, of uh, the struggle, um, the apartheid um, state was forced into uh, coming to the table mm. and negotiating. But I think, you know, 30 years later, we, we, we need to remind ourselves that you know, that wasn't the end of a process. That was the beginning of a very turbulent four years during which 15,000 people, estimated, mm. died, uh, you know, in political violence. So it was a time that was full of, of pitfalls and dangers. Mm. What did Madiba say about that moment, the uh, speech? Well... <laughs> He, he said quite a few things, yeah. and uh, you know, one of the, from an archival point yeah. of view, one of the interesting things for me is that so many people claim to have been part of writing that speech. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do know is that Madiba insisted on saying a few things that, that were actually no longer ANC policy. Mm -hmm. And what he was saying is that even if policy has shifted, I need to be saying exactly what I said when I went into prison, or else people will feel that I've. Um, you know, mm. I'm getting soft. What was going on behind the scenes uh, that led up to February 2nd announcement? There were meetings inside the country, meetings outside the country. 
People talk about there was a lead up to this. So whilst on the day, um, some might have been surprised, a lot of people in the know sort of saw it coming. Well, you know, in, in 1989, mm -hmm. there were a number of other significant releases of political prisoners. And I think uh, it, it, it felt like the writing was on the wall. Uh, behind the scenes, the real, I think, um, interesting back and forth had to do with the precise timing is that the state wanted to rush Madiba out once they had made the decision um, and not give the ANC enough time to create a major reception right. for him. And right. Madiba basically refused to leave prison until he was ready to go. And uh, what did being ready mean for him? Well, I think being ready for him was always about the collective and is the movement uh, ready to make sure that this moment achieves what we wanted to mm. achieve. All right, so when we look back on that day now, what should South Africans be saying, thinking about it in the context of uh, what we did get to enjoy in 1994? As you said, the next four years were, were 15,000 people died, but it was a significant start. Well, I, I suppose the most important question mm. we need to be asking today as South Africans is um, Madiba came out of prison. Yeah. As, as we say, a free person. Mm. He wasn't yet free because apartheid was still in place. But I think the question we need to be asking is how free are South Africans 30 years later? And I think we have to be frank about this mm. is that the, the project of transformation which went hand in hand with the project of reconciliation um, has um, lost momentum yeah. and yeah. there's a lot of transformation work mm. that needs to be done. Uh, getting back to de Klerk, he's he's had to defend his legacy quite a bit over the years and he says, look, I, I got it from the right wing, uh, Trenik to Hartenberg, and they, they even staged a walkout, I think, during the uh, speech itself. Um, and he's, he's, I don't know, I think it, one gets a feeling that he feels that he should get a bit more credit for what happened, even if he was forced to the table. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's not for people of my generation mm. to be um, determining um, this narrative. I think it's for young South Africans. Mm. And I mean, Peter, you know as well as I do that there is a generation of South Africans uh, looking back and saying, well, Madiba made too many uh, compromises mm. during that process. And it would be interesting to hear from young people how they feel about de Klerk's role during mm. that process. Mm. Mm. All right, so um, I don't know, the foundation, is there, is there any message that they've, they've been wanting to uh, spread on a day like today? Yeah, I think it links back to that point uh, on transformation, mm. is, is that the work is, is, is not finished um, and that we need to find reserves of energy and endurance, all of us uh, as South Africans, to keep going with that work. Um, I think it's, it's, it's also clear that when Madiba came out of prison, he, he, he moved into a process of formal negotiation yeah. to make peace. And in a sense, in South Africa today, we're at that point again where we have to negotiate a way forward. If you think about the land issue, for mm. example, all of us are going to have to take responsibility and it's going to be cross-sectoral. Mm. Uh, so we need to negotiate a path forward if we're going to achieve the, the country of Madiba's mm. dreams. All right, Vern Harris, we're going to have to leave it there. But thanks very much indeed for coming through and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Pleasure. Thanks so much.